Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Precious Metalverse. Today we're going to be talking about optimizing your Precious Metal portfolio based on modern portfolio theory. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also uh, let me know what you guys think about the content um, in the comment section below. And if you want to discuss these charts, you can check out my Telegram channel as well, which you can find in the description below. So let's go ahead and jump in. So we're going to be looking at four different precious metals in this video and how you can use historical data to potentially optimize your portfolio based on your expected returns and the volatility or the risk. So the four, the four metals that we're looking at are gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. And we're going to, for, we're going to start with a brute force approach, so Monte Carlo method, to obtain the portfolio with the highest risk adjusted returns, okay? So this is the Sharpe ratio. And then we're also gonna look at the portfolio with the lowest volatility. So maybe you're a little bit more risk averse than you know most people and you would rather sit on a, a portfolio where the, where the volatility would be lower but your expected returns would also be lower. We're then going to finish the video with um, you know using quadratic programming to just solve for the portfolio weights, which maximize your risk adjusted returns. So we're gonna systematically go through the process. So I hope it's informative to you guys. Um, and then you can always leave me a note down in the description or in the comment section below, telling me what you wanna see in the future. You know, are there other precious metals? We certainly cover a lot of different assets, asset classes on the channel. Um, so just let me know what you guys think. So to begin with, the first thing we're going to look at is we I, I ran a hundred portfolios, so I just looked at a hundred different portfolios. Um, so there's really no initial pattern emerging here, and you can see that what we're looking at is the expected return, and this expected return is based on historical data for these four precious metals going back to the 1990s, the early 1990s. You obviously you could change your expected return to be what you project out for the next decade to be and use that and feed that in. And we're probably gonna do that in a future video. But for this video, we're just looking at historical returns. And we I even got the daily time frames. So we have the daily time frame, but it's annualized. So you know, if you see say 0.06, then for annual, this would mean six percent annual versus volatility and this this is what a lot of people would consider say your, your risk level um, now it's color coded by the sharp ratio and the sharp ratio is your expected it's your it's essentially your you know your excess return over your your volatility level and you can see that it goes from around 0.12 to 0 0.4 which by other asset class standards is not that great but we'll talk about we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video so in terms of 100 portfolios, so we just ran 100 different completely random portfolios. We plotted the expected return versus the volatility. It turns out that the portfolio that maximizes your sharp ratio or your risk adjusted returns is the green star. And you can see that for that, the portfolio would be weighted around 44% gold, 0.6% silver, 7.5% platinum, and 48% palladium. Now, is this important? It's not important at all. We only ran 100 portfolios. When you have four different assets, only running 100 different portfolios is essentially nothing and it's meaningless. But I just wanna get you guys accustomed to the approach. If you wanted to minimize your volatility, so you don't wanna maximize your sharp ratio, but you'd prefer to minimize your volatility, you could, you know, you could come over on um, into this level over here. And by the way, I mean, this is this red star here, you can see it's as far left on the curve as you can go. And to do this, you'd be you'd be looking at around 58% gold, 6% silver, 27% platinum, and 9% palladium. Now, let's run let's run more portfolios because 100 portfolios isn't a whole lot. But I just want you kind of you guys to see the the, the bullet shape develop of the efficient frontier, um, you know, using this modern portfolio theory. So running a thousand portfolios, you can see that our gold has gone from 43%. It found a much better portfolio to maximize the sharp. It found 67% uh, gold, 2.2% silver, 1.9% platinum, and 28% palladium would maximize your sharp ratio given a thousand random portfolios. To minimize your volatility, you can see the gold is a lot higher. So it would be 81% gold, 1.5% silver, 16.6% platinum, and 0.6% palladium. This is again is with a thousand portfolios. 
Now, again, you shouldn't dwell on these numbers. I'm just showing you how they converge. And then we're gonna use a little bit of quadratic programming at the end to just solve for the best portfolio. Um, but if you, if you ran it for say 10,000 portfolios, you can see that we're starting to hone in. Things aren't changing quite as much. It would be around 64% gold, 0.7% silver, 0.3% platinum, and 34% palladium. And then to minimize your volatility, so at the leftmost point on this curve, so this would basically be the beginning of the efficient frontier because down here would essentially be the inefficient frontier. You wouldn't wanna be down here at a portfolio because well, for the same risk level, you could be all the way up here with a much higher expected return based on historical data. So with that said, to minimize your volatility, given 10,000 random portfolios, it found that the portfolio consisting of 72% gold, 1% silver, 22% platinum, and 4.5% palladium minimized your volatility. Now, the largest amount of cases that I ran for this before I just you know went switched over to quadratic programming, just to get a nice looking bullet shape here, was 100,000 portfolios. And you can see that the weight isn't really changing you know, as much now, but it is still changing some. So in order to maximize your portfolio here, it ended up being around 73% gold um, and 26% uh, palladium with small portions of silver and platinum. And then to minimize your volatility, it was mainly just 77% gold and 21% platinum with a little bit of silver and palladium mixed in. Okay, so this covers it for just looking at, say, 100,000 portfolios and going the Monte Carlo approach. Now, before we get into the quadratic programming portion of the video, I wanted to show one more thing. What if you wanted to, or a couple more things, what if you just wanted to, you don't care about the sharp ratio, you don't care about the minimum volatility ratio, all you care about is you want to look at your expected returns of the past, so or look at annualized returns historically, and then use that to project what would be, you know, essentially this data point way up here that maximizes your expected returns. You don't even care that it gives you a volatility level of 30%, which would mean, by the way, if your expected return is 8% and your volatility is say 30%, then to a 68% confidence level, so one standard deviation, your expected return would be 8% plus or minus 30%, which means you could easily see a negative return. It, you know, an expected annual return does not mean you have to see 8%. It just means that within one standard deviation, your expected return would be say 8% plus or minus 30%, which is a lot higher than say your expected return being say 6% plus or minus 17%, if that makes sense for the lowest volatility level. So for the highest expected return based off the 100,000 portfolios that I ran, it turns out that it would have been 5.5% um, gold, 2.4% silver, 92% platinum, and 0.3% palladium. So this would be to maximize your expected return based on historical data you know, since the 1990s. Now, with all that said, let's get into you know, the, the, the other part bef you know, before the quadratic programming of looking at what, what if you don't care, again, about the sharp ratio, you don't care about minimizing your volatility, you just have a certain risk level you're okay with and you apply this across various asset classes. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if your volatility that you're okay with is 20%, then you're, you're in order to go to 20%, if you went up to the efficient frontier, so this curve up here, then maximizing your expected return for a risk level of 20%, your weights would have been around 44% gold and 55% palladium with a little bit of silver and platinum. This would have given you an expected return of 7.2%, okay? And I should note that I gave this a little bit of tolerance, so each percent here, so 20%, it's plus or minus 1%, and then 25% is also plus or minus 1%. So it could be down to 23% or 24%, and it could be as high as 26%. So a 20% volatility would correspond to you know one of the data points right here, giving you an expected return of around 7.2%, and this, these would have been the weights. If you had a little bit higher of a risk appetite, then maybe your, your risk level is 25%, and you know you came up here, you you found a portfolio that gave you an expected return of 7.9%, so way up here, that portfolio would have consisted of 21% gold and 25% palladium. Um, and that's just a random portfolio. I mean, that was what maximized it at that level. There's obviously other portfolios around that level that would have you know, had very, it could have had very different uh, weights. 
And then finally, to, to get the highest expected return um, at a volatility level of 30%, then it would have looked like uh, basically hardly anything in most of the assets and then most of it 94% um, in Palladium. So I hope that makes sense, uh, at least in terms of these four, four, four uh, precious metals, this is what the data su suggests. Now, what if we just switch over to quadratic programming? You know, we, we map out our efficient frontier and we find the best sharp ratio. Well, to find the best risk adjusted returns based off historical data for the last few decades, it turns out that your portfolio would identically consist of 73.3% gold, 26.7% palladium, and 0% silver and 0% platinum. So essentially what it's doing is it's saying, you know what, to maximize the sharp ratio, you really don't want any silver. You really don't want any platinum. You just want gold or palladium. Now, I know this doesn't necessarily please everyone. I get that there's a lot of people that think, especially, you know, silver is very undervalued. And for all I know, it could be undervalued. I'm just going off historical data since the 1990s. If I were to change the data to maybe go to, you know, start at some other time frame, then maybe we would get slightly different results. Um, and maybe in a future video, we'll, we'll go through, okay, these would be the results if you were looking at, say, different time frames. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I just what I did was I just went as far back that I could find reliable data for, for each asset. So, of course, I could find gold back a lot further. Some of the other, coin, you know, some of the other currents or the precious metals I could find back further. But in order to find daily data for all four of them, the best I could do in about 30 minutes of searching was the 1990s, um, and this is daily data. Okay, so in order, you know, again, the best one in terms of quadratic programming would be around 73% gold and 27% palladium. In future videos, we'll also, again, talk about different time frames. We'll also talk about putting in maybe, you know, uh, a projected return and using that as our expected return. And, you know, that would obviously take a lot of, you know, additional research into, you know, into each uh, precious metal to identify, you know, what do we think an expected return could be over the next five to 10 years. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I, I historically have spoken mostly about cryptocurrency, but it turns out, you know, I, I find I find applying these um, these methods to other asset classes are very useful. And, um, you know, and, and we can we can systematically go through each asset class and I and, and you know, apply similar types of analysis. Um, so we're going to continue to build this out. I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, share it with with a few other people if you think it was if you think it was worthwhile. Um, and then also the last thing I wanted to talk about was if the sharp ratio is so low, is there a reason to include precious metals in your portfolio? For instance, with cryptocurrency, we found that the sharp ratio given data from 2015 is around one. And with traditional markets too, you know, it, it tends to be around one. I mean, it can obviously fluctuate um, around that level, but around one is a decent sharp ratio. So with a sharp ratio of precious metals being so low, given historical data going back a few decades, is this something you would want to include in your portfolio? And in order to assess that, we'd have to, you know, put put in you know these precious metals into a portfolio consisting of index funds, consisting of other asset classes. And while it might you might think, well, why would it? Why would precious metals um, be included in something if the sharp ratio is so low? You have to remember that including assets that are uncorrelated to each other can help, you know, if you're if you're including, say, gold and the covariance between gold and another asset you hold is low, then in, when you're when you're calculating your covariance matrix and solving for, um, you know, solving for your, you know, your your risk adjusted returns, having uncorrelated assets is is useful because it overall would reduce your volatility, which reduces your subsequent risk. So that's not to say, you know, one way or another yet, we're going to we're going to dive into it. If you want to make sure you see these videos in the future, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like the content uh, a lot and you want access to um, some premium content, I do have my own website. It's actually into the cryptoverse.com because I did launch this channel uh, primarily looking at cryptocurrency. Um, so go check that out into the cryptoverse.com and you'll get access to um, premium videos, premium newsletters dating back um, a little while and also access to a Google Sheets dashboard where I have, you know, um, regression analysis on like, you know, things like the total cryptocurrency market cap, 
We also have stuff on Tesla. We're going to be putting more stuff on precious metals. So check it out. Um, we'd love to have you guys join. If you sign up, uh, you can, you know, it's just a monthly subscription. So if you, if you sign up, I'll see you in your inbox soon. Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys next time. Bye.